This is a book entitled Reminiscences, Historical and Biographical of a Ministry in the Reformed Presbyterian Church During 53 Years by David Steele, pastor of the R.P. Congregation, Philadelphia. Quote, The laborer is worthy of his hire, unquote, Luke 10, verse 7. Quote, I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel, unquote, Acts 20, verse 33. Philadelphia, Press of William Sicklemore, 1420 Chestnut Street. Preface No one can write reminiscences, personal recollections, or autobiography without liability to the imputation of egotism. Yet who can so accurately describe the inward and outward life of any man as himself? Many memoirs, biographies, and autobiographies have been both entertaining and instructive, which no one but a cynical critic would impute to egotism. Moses, David, Paul, and others intermingled reminiscences and autobiography with the record of their respective times. Their examples may be safely followed in subservience to the glory of God and the welfare of man. Such are the objects contemplated in this work. It is not expected that the present publication will be popular with the present generation. The topics treated are not adapted to the tastes of many in this age, and to most persons the principles discussed will be as riddles, quite enigmatic. Psalm 78, verse 2 The testimony of Christ's witnesses has never been acceptable to the world, least of all to backsliders. Nevertheless, there is warrantable ground to expect that what is contained in the following pages will be helpful to some in following ages who may be moved by the Spirit of God to inquire and search for the, quote, landmarks which the fathers have set, unquote. Among these will be found that grand, quote, international document, unquote, the Solemn League, ready to be placed in the foundation of the Millennial Temple, quote, when the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory, unquote, and with an eye to that highest and most desirable end, this contribution is with humble confidence submitted to his patronage. David Steele, September 1883 Introduction Among the aphorisms of Solomon occur these words, quote, of making many books there is no end, unquote. Words which, to most readers, suggest the instant inquiry, quote, what would he say if living in our time, unquote. The answer to this question can be at best only conjecture, and it is therefore left to each one to frame for himself. It is manifest, however, that the present age is wonderfully prolific in multiplying books. The human mind, by its divine constitution, is necessarily active, and in most minds there is a natural propensity, orally or in writing, to communicate their thoughts to others. The force of this propensity is greatly diversified, as much so, perhaps, as the features of our faces. Although the multitudes of books, magazines, pamphlets, and tracts which issue from a teeming press about to million, excuse me, amount to millions annually, they do not amount to a tithe of the thoughts of human hearts which find no expression either in word or writing. But alas, many or most of these whether latent or expressed, or of such moral complexion as to confirm the testimony of him who alone searcheth the heart, that, quote, out of it proceed evil thoughts, unquote, etc. Most modern books have at least one material advantage above those of former ages. They are more convenient to handle. The ponderous folios are now mostly confined to encyclopedias and illustrated family Bibles. The value or utility of the illustrations in the latter may be questionable. Pictures are for children, and even they are more amused than instructed by them. Believing that the Holy Scriptures of the Old and New Testaments are an objective and supernatural revelation of the character and will of God, of supreme authority and alone infallible as a directory of human belief and conduct, and believing, moreover, that the law and the testimony, though distinct, are inseparable, Exodus 20, verse 17, and that the precepts of the moral law are best interpreted in the life of the lawgiver himself, and then in the approved examples, the footsteps of his hitherto little flock, the flock of slaughter, 
it shall be my endeavor in the following quote, narrative unquote, to have this law and these examples always in view. Accordingly, having occasion to speak of myself in connection with others and disregarding the charge of egotism, I will use the first person and singular number. My warrant may be seen in the example of the first inspired writer, especially in the book of Deuteronomy. Likewise, the apostle of the Gentiles, within the compass of a few verses and in necessary self-defense, speaks both in the first and third persons, 2 Corinthians 12, verses 1 through 5. It is an instructive fact that Paul was, quote, constrained to appeal unto Caesar, unquote, but he had been obliged repeatedly to ask from heathens that liberty denied to him by his own countrymen to defend himself in defense of the gospel, Acts 21, verses 37 through 39. All people know that the most effectual way to destroy the credibility of a witness is to destroy his moral character. I shall have occasion to vindicate myself in vindicating truth and order against false accusations, misrepresentations, and evil surmisings. In doing this, it will be necessary to designate persons by name in connection with public transactions. Many of the actors within the compass of this, quote, narrative, unquote, are silent in the grave, indeed, most of them. But I trust that nothing from my pen will do wrong, in the, it will do wrong to the memory of those from whose sentiments and practice I was constrained to dissent. With some of them I often, quote, joined sweet counsel and walked to the house of God in company, unquote. Some may suppose that the title and the contents of this book do not harmonize. Well, to tell the truth, the heterogeneous matter to be recorded caused considerable difficulty in fixing upon a suitable title, inasmuch as important events before my time cannot rank under, quote, reminiscences, unquote. Yet they are surely historical. Also, history and biography, like twins, are closely allied. What is history? Is it not biography extended? A record of events in which individuals and their associates were the actors? And, as to autobiography, when one writes of himself, this sort of writing is most commonly attributed to an ambitious desire for posthumous fame. But every rule, we say, has exceptions. Even so in this case, Moses, David, Jeremiah... John, Paul, and others wrote about themselves, especially as they were associated with others in public transactions, which had an influence for good or evil upon communities. But will any Christian say that any of these men were actuated by mercenary motives or unholy ambition? Certainly not. And if any one would venture to insinuate that they or any one of them was so actuated, he would thereby subject himself to just suspicion of being guilty in the matter falsely imputed to them, no uncommon case. Exodus 2, verses 13 and 14. Many books are entertaining to a certain class of readers simply because they are amusing, and such books are of little, if any, intrinsic value. Other books are interesting to a smaller and better class because they are both entertaining and instructive, and these are intrinsically valuable. And when one has become interested in any book, and believes that he has received instruction by its perusal, he naturally desires to know something about the author. If any reader of the following pages should find them interesting and believe that he has derived instruction from them, I purpose to gratify a natural and lawful curiosity by giving him, at the very outset, some account of myself, having regard to that great and solemn assembly when, quote, every one of us shall give an account of himself to God, unquote.